okay so what's going on guys welcome to a video so in this video I had to put everything on the back burner and have to start from scratch basically what we're looking at we had to do a complete engine rebuild of my complete engine basically so what turned out supposed to be preventative maintenance ended up having to be a complete engine rebuild so right now you're looking at you can see I stripped the valve cover everything off looking at all of the injector ports and everything and you could see that the timing was off by a few degrees after having the injectors pulled out and everything you can see in this condition the state of them um, the injectors were clogged up they messed their gunk with carbon and everything so while everything was out looking for the possible suspects everything had to be redone this is the state of the glow plugs now what the glow plugs purpose is, is to heat the diesel that spring into the combustion chamber on initial startup basically so that the diesel is nice and warm and to a point where it's able to combust right now you can see each condition of them and you can see the condition the basically the condition you can see look at the tips of them a couple of them actually damaged broken so all these were replaced in the long run looking at the front of the engine you can see that the everything basically the head and kind of camshafts and everything were all looking good order so there was no need for worrying about the camshaft and everything as such but the main focus was the timing now at this point and when i was stripping everything i don't know where the cause of failure was until you see later in the video on a little side note off camera i did an egr delete kit uh, basically i made my own egr delete kit so there's no additional cooling or any of that such as it's all been taken off and it pushes more boost to the turbo and when now you're looking at the intake ports now because of that EGR being still on the car at this point in time you can see how much of oil and crap and everything is being passed through to the intake so right now after having everything done the intake still runs much cleaner and you can see the difference there's the point of failure right here in cylinder number two which you're looking at where it's the most carbon build up and everything that's where the cause of failure was all right so what's going on guys welcome to part two of this complete series now what i thought would be preventative maintenance ended up having to be a complete engine rebuild i'll show you guys what i mean right now okay sorry from where we left off yesterday with the last part sorry from the last part as you can see the head is out of the car it is the ball actually the balls look fine feels fine there's no there's no scoring or ridges on the actual ball itself so that's i got away with that but when it comes to stuff like the head itself you can see this is cylinder one two three and four the worst of the worst is cylinder two which actually put it and it's got so much of i have no idea what broke or something got into this engine something got into this is the only engine of, this is the only cylinder that had no compression on this thing whatsoever so i'm looking at the actual head itself the head doesn't seem to have any fractures or any cracks but it's just the main uh, combustion chamber on cylinder two uh, all the rest of it all looks fine so you can see the head gasket i'm the first time i'm actually looking at it properly the head gasket needs to be replaced the way like i said in previous videos it's already started splitting and stuff like that so i'm not too sure if that was normal or because everything else is tightly bonded so yeah the head gasket is going is needs to be replaced finally after a couple of years uh now let me bring you guys to show you the pistons this is piston number one you can see it's not too bad it's just got this little ridge on the valve seat um piston two is the worst one you can see this is where something I, i'm not too sure what was in this thing that was run, running around and doing whatever it is inside here so this person is is damaged uh third person looks no this is actually number four you can see that ridge and that curve on the on the end of the person that's not supposed to be there so that needs to go uh person three looks like we can get away with it there's no signs of any stretches or curvages or maybe they i think there is slight uh, there's one of here somewhere it's like a little dent on it somewhere here so yeah person three needs to be replaced the only actual good one is, is, uh, is person number person number one sorry 
uh, yeah the head actually seems to be fine on the top end of it I don't see any issues with it. the rockers and all all seem fine but the valves need to be redone so yeah that needs to go I'm actually everything needs to be done from cylinder 2 onwards I'm sure you guys intake this is the intake manifold you can see a cylinder 1 all the way to 4 cylinder 1 is clean ish and cylinder 2 you can see I don't know what is all built up in this thing like, I don't know what actually failed to the point where it's not, it's not even closing the it's not even allowing the the manifold to close properly so yeah that needs to be soaked in some kind of acid or something to break down all the crap inside I don't know what was inside what got into it now um, in retrospect I should have been done a swirl flap kit a delete on this thing here but to get the kit is a couple weeks out and I don't really have that time to wait to get this thing sorted out uh, as for the injectors, I know you guys have been asking for it a lot. So here's injectors 1 to 4. As you guys can see, person, uh, so injector number 2 was the hardest to come out because of all of the debris that was stuck in this thing. So I'm going to be going over this in a, in a separate video to have this thing completely cleaned up and refurbished and serviced and everything just to get that part taken care of. Yeah, so that's why I am with that at the moment. I, this would have been a more productive video if I was actually doing anything, but uh, right now I'd rather just have it done by myself and professionals where I can. So yeah, we got mechanics that's working on it. So yeah, I'd rather just let them take care of it for now. And then the next part, I'm going to be getting the new rings, the new bearings, the new head gasket. Hopefully I can get some new pistons as well. That's kind of my main focus at this point in time. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to get that taken care of. Um, most likely the day after making this video. So I'll be looking for uh, new pistons for tomorrow. I've got a couple of guys that are looking for me at the moment. So if I can find that, that's, uh, that'll, be, that'll be really good. So yeah. Okay, so this is the third day of working on this car. And I found the fault. After opening up, pulling up from the intake, remember I saw that there was this combustion chamber here that had all the gunk in it. Well, a lot of people have been asking me why do I still have the swirl flaps on the car. This is what a swirl flap is supposed to look like. And this is what the broken one actually looks like. That little small rod at the bottom, I mean at the top of the flap itself, broke, went into the combustion chamber, hit the piston, bent the valve, and that's what caused everything so now what I'm gonna do is took, taking everything out I'm gonna be grinding these flaps off the car and then putting it back into seal it as a temporary fix until I get a proper swirl flap delete kit which should last in theory longer than what this does so I'm just gonna go ahead with that and I'll catch you guys later okay so I've taken out the flaps and ground them down Okay, sorry for interrupting myself, but I just want to stop here and say that I did remove the pins and I did end up sealing up the entire holes that cover this flap. So once that was done, we put everything back together and the entire intake system is completely sealed. So that they stay no flap at all. So all it does is it just goes in like this. No. It goes in this way with this tab facing up and it's better if I had two hands but get the idea just sits in like that and screws in with these screws right here these T20s so I'm just going to close everything up put the rod back in place put the actuator back in place as well like this and it should be deleted afterwards so we honed the bore and made sure everything is fine so there's no particles and everything afterwards. So when we put the piston in everything was perfect. This is a little side by side comparison of what the regular valve straight was looking and what the bent valve ended up looking like. So you can tell the difference as to where the damage was. Right after getting the new pistons and everything, when I say new, I did end up getting the set used from a relatively running car. Basically, they just got this car in, 
to strip it for parts so i managed to get the set of pistons and i'm probably doing now is just putting in the rings we meant to add hastings rings now these were quite on a little bit on the expensive side but but when it comes to quality i didn't want to tear ch chance out on anything on it for this car so i went with new rings and this is a bit of a weird size because it's a three millimeter for the first ring uh, it was a 2.5 i'm not mistaken for the second and it was a two millimeter for the oil ring so yeah we put in anything new and got this car to be sorted out properly So for the rings you know I went with Hastings now for the bearings itself there was just the big end bearings I went with Arco. Now I haven't had any problem with Arco I've been using them on cars before so I knew this was going to be a very good thing and there wasn't any sort of wearing or wear. there wasn't any form of wearing or anything on the original bearings but this was just for peace of mind now I wasn't going to do the old bearings itself I had to put new. Here's an up close of the piston rings and the bearings itself so you can go and have a look and see for yourself maybe I'll leave a link in the description if I can actually find something like that but uh, these rings come per cylinder and the bearings come as a set moving on to the injectors which many of you guys have been asking about now these injectors were completely clogged so what I did was I soaked them up in some cleaner I soaked them up with petrol and I soaked them up with diesel as well so I got everything completely clean I cleaned out the nozzles I cleaned out the tips and I cleaned out the entire shaft of the thing so you can see I'm using a scotch bread pad and an abrasive pad just to get everything all loosened up and cleaned up thereafter I'm gonna put it onto the vise and I'm gonna strip them to clean out the nozzles which you'll see soon and there's not going to be a complete rundown as to what's going on there are plenty of videos on how to service these injectors but um yeah this will bring you guys along so you can see exactly what i did
compression being built up in the combustion chamber, nothing leaks out at this point in time, which we'll see soon. Here comes the most important thing after having everything done, which I will throw in the corner right now before you can see anything. I will pause this video now. Now the reason why you're not seeing exactly what I'm talking about is because I wasn't here when the head was being talked down. What I'm going to show you now is the talk sequence and the amount of talk that it needs. So you can follow the sequence and talk the head down to get the correct specs. If you happen to purchase a head gasket with its own talk specs, it is advised that you use those talks instead of the original uh, talk specs for your engine because the different gaskets take different talks to crush them down so that they, it ensures a complete seal. When setting up the camshaft, you need to make sure they are in the correct orientation. The exhaust cam will be on the left, the intake cam will be on the right, marked and they distinctively noticed by the way that they are shaped. The intake cam has the, uh, the threads for the chain to mount onto, whereas the exhaust cam has the uh, point in where the, where the vacuum pump mounts onto. Each cam cap has its own specific point of where it needs to be mounted. Intake cam is marked in with, with an A and a specific number, so you know it's A1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Exhaust cam is, mar is marked with an E, so it's marked from E1 all the way to E5. It is important to note that the exhaust cam and the intake cam must have the markings meshed in before locking everything down. Then you can use your locking tool to make sure it doesn't move. As you can see right here, the exhaust, the caps have been mounted and the exhaust cam is being locked in place so that it does not move. So once you get that locked in, you don't have to worry about the timing going off. that noise you are hearing is coming from the cylinder head which you'll see right now so we ended up finding that on port number two that the, this valve was not seated properly send the head to the engineers got it back and had everything perfectly set up so now we can put it on the car over the past couple of days after following the complete engine rebuild i had decided to pull the entire interior and dashboard and everything apart to get the heater working so now that's all sorted out um, so yeah, everything finally is working and I'm sorry I couldn't do a proper intro and outro for this video But I will have follow-ups coming through in the next couple of days But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching guys. The car is running. Leave your comments down below. Subscribe if you're new and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for all your support and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers